Spurgeon here with Revzilla, and in this video we're going to walk you through a maintenance checklist of items on your bike that deserve a little bit of attention before kicking off the new riding season. Now in certain states there's going to be an annual required inspection of your motorcycle, but if you don't live in one of those states or if you tackle a lot of miles, the onus is going to be on you to make sure that your bike is up to snuff. Now when you're maintaining your motorcycle, nothing is going to trump the factory service manual and we're always going to recommend that you start there. However, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to walk you through a nine step checklist of things that really you should be looking for on your bike prior to bringing it out of winter hibernation. Now at any point in this video, if you want more information on anything that we're talking about, you can check out Revzilla.com. Once you're there, you'll find a downloadable PDF version of the checklist that you can print out and hang up on the wall in your garage. You'll also find an accompanying Common Tread article that goes a little bit more in depth with everything that we're gonna be talking about today. So we're gonna kick things off with step one, which is a simple walk around of your motorcycle. When you're walking around, you wanna check for any leaking fluids or any areas in your bike where there might be rubbing where there's not supposed to be. When you're looking for the leaking fluids, the three main areas you wanna check are your radiator, your oil filter, as well as those fork seals up front. And if you have any grease fittings, hit those with a bit of lube as well. Now the other thing you wanna check at this process is your lenses and your lights. If you have any cracked turn signal lenses or headlight lenses, any burned out bulbs, you wanna address those right now. And then this is the perfect time that you can check your registration and your insurance cards and make sure that all your information is going to be up to date. The spring is the perfect time to check the age of your battery. Keep in mind that even the best batteries out there are going to have a shelf life. Now while it's kind of hard to figure out exactly when that battery is going to quit on you, if it's older than five years or if you're starting to notice some hard cranking, it's probably a good time to consider a replacement. Keep in mind that it's a lot easier to replace your battery in the comfort of your garage than when it leaves you stranded on the side of the road. Now when you're checking your tires, you want to make sure that you check the integrity of your rubber as well as the depth of your tread. And that's because if you're riding around on an older motorcycle or something that you're just not tackling a lot of miles on, it is possible that the integrity of the rubber can actually deteriorate and dry rot prior to using up all the tread on the tires themselves. Now this is also a great time for you to check your wheel bearings as well as your steering head bearings. And in order to do that, you need to lift the motorcycle wheels off the ground. Now if you have a center stand, this is super easy to do. Put the bike up on the center stand and have a friend help you out by weighting the back of the bike so you can get the front or the rear wheel off the ground easily. If you've got a sport bike, this is probably the most complicated bike to tackle this with, it will really be a lot easier if you have a Bursic stand or some kind of a Pitbull jack stand in your garage to help you get those wheels off the ground and unweighted. If you're on a cruiser, you can get away with using a floor jack. And then if you have a dirt bike, well that's just super easy because it's so lightweight. You just put it up on a dirt bike stand and you can do your maintenance checks right there. When you're done with the wheels, this is the perfect time to check your bike's final drive. And the most common setup that you're going to see out there is going to be a chain and sprockets. Now really what you want to do is you want to check your sprockets for any excessive wear on the teeth and your chain for any excessive play. If you're noticing you know, too much wear on either of these components, you want to make sure you replace them as a complete set. You don't want to replace them individually. Now if your bike has a belt drive, check the belt for any cracks, make sure the tension is set correctly, and you want to wrap this section up by cleaning and lubing your chain chain, or if you have a shaft drive, make sure you swap out that gear oil. Now when checking your brakes, you want to start with the pads to make sure you have an adequate amount of material left on the plates. And most modern disc brakes will have a little window in the caliper that you can actually see the indicator of the pads to know how much life you have left in them. However, it's really a great time to pull those calipers off and clean and grease the slide pins to ensure smooth operation of your brakes. Now if your motorcycle employs a drum brake, check for a shoe life indicator where you can easily see how much life is left in the shoe. If your bike has this, it's a lot easier to check the shoe life using this method than having to pull the whole wheel apart. Your motorcycle's fluids should be changed regularly. And if you're not sure as to whether or not your fluids need to be changed, I would recommend referring to the maintenance schedule in your owner's manual. A good rule of thumb, however, is to change your oil once a year if you're not hitting the mileage requirements. And if your bike features liquid cooling, flush out that radiator every two years. Now, while some manufacturers say that you can stretch a brake fluid flush out to four years, I prefer to hit that one every two. Now it's customary to change your oil filter when you're changing your oil, but don't forget about the rest of the filters on your motorcycle as well. 
For your air filter, a lot of manufacturers are gonna recommend changing that on a mileage basis. But keep in mind, if you're riding off-road or in dusty conditions, you might need to change that more frequently. So don't forget to check that. And if your bike has a fuel filter, this would be a great time to change that as well. I would recommend if you've got old gas that's been sitting in the tank all winter, go for a long ride, burn through all that, and then put in a new fuel filter. Lubing your motorcycle's throttle and clutch cables is often an overlooked maintenance exercise. So you want to make sure you're regularly lubing these cables to ensure proper clutch and throttle operation. If you have a hydraulic clutch in your bike, you want to make sure that you're regularly flushing out your hydraulic clutch fluid and installing new fluid. Mirrors get bumped and nuts and bolts can vibrate loose. So in this final step, all we're gonna take a look at are critical fasteners. And as you're working through this, think about your most important ones. Your handlebar clamps, your triple clamps, those axle nuts down on your wheels, and any kind of shift linkage that might be on your motorcycle. And once you do that, your bike is pretty much prepped to roll for spring. And remember, if there's anything that you've seen in this video that you want a little bit more clarity on, now is the time you want to head over to Revzilla.com where you can check out the accompanying article as well as print off that downloadable PDF of the checklist to make sure that your bike is ready to roll into the new riding season. I want to thank you for joining us as we walk through this checklist to make sure your bike is prepped for spring. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.